Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I am Starco Gaming, and we are back with another Marvel Future Fighter video, guys. Today we're gonna do an, an updated version of our Alliance Ball Extreme Guide. The four Namer, a lot of change happened in the past few months with Namer, and I think we are due to do an updated version definitely uh, as it is now for some people people who has 60 percent energy attack plus on cards they can actually cap with namer so it's very very important to cover him properly and uh, show what he can do and how to build him and how to play him properly and by the way guys if you want more marvel future fight content make sure to subscribe to the channel and check the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified when post new video and also don't forget to follow us on twitch for our daily list live stream well monday through saturday 7 p.m pacific time the link is in the description down below so first thing what is actually the best team for a namer the best team for namer is pretty simple you have red oak as a lead you have Taskmaster as a support with the uniform only if you have the uniform. Otherwise, you want to use either Colossus or Hulk, the villain Hulk. And then you have, obviously, Namer. Now, which characters you want to put the CTPF inside if you want? If you have one, Red Hulk or Taskmaster, it does not matter. I did a test with both. I did a test without CTPF inside on any of them. And... Um, we get the same score if you either put the insight on Taskmaster or on a Red Hulk. So uh, this is not true that the CTP of insight does not work on Taskmaster. Like last week, I hit uh, two weeks ago, I hit 6.23 million, I believe so. Uh, and I had my insight on Taskmaster. And this week, I hit 6.13, I believe so, in this video, and uh, I have the insight on Red Oak. So that kind of proved the points that it doesn't matter where you actually put that CTPF inside. If you use the CTPF insights, what's very important that CTPF insight, guys, is to get the 20% increased damage to superhero type character and 20% increased damage dealt to super villain, super villain type characters by 20%. And for people wondering why they only have one stat, sometimes on their ctp is because you need to get it to 20 percent to get the double stats on it like if you have 10 percent it's going to be either super hero or super villain if you have 15 percent it's going to be uh, you have a chance to have both both but most of the time it's only going to be either super hero or super villain and that 20 percent is guaranteed to have both superhero and super villain just wanted to mention that really fast but because that is actually a question i get a lot of time uh so now if we look at the the namer uh, my namer is jacked up guys uh, i'll be honest about that i only have 50 percent physical attack on cards but i really make up with odin blessing on this guy he gets all the physical attack odin blessing well, then blessing I can put on him because he is a very, very important character. He covers uh, combat villain, so two days uh, in two days right there, two alliance ball stream there. Uh, you know, two weeks every two weeks on Thursday, you have two run with him, and then combat uh, super hero is actually better than Captain America. So he is very, very, very he's pretty much. In my opinion, the most important physical attack character in the game, and plus he can score very high, which which helps. A lot in scoring more so definitely this guy is jacked up for me you're gonna see as we go through the build uh so we're gonna go through the build then we're gonna talk about the rotation guys uh and then we're gonna jump in the gameplay by the way so here we have max cooldown max single defense almost max critical damage uh max critical rate obviously 128 percent attack speed physical attack is 41,428 in about Two weeks from now, when I finally finish his uniform to mythical, this uh, should get over 42,000. This is going to be very, very great, obviously. That's going to increase my score. I might be able to push 6.5 million with only, uh, with only um, 50% physical attack on cards. That's going to be amazing. Uh, if we look at the gear, you can see he is jacked up on Odin Blessing. We got 13 Odin Blessing on this guy. Double physical attack. Uh, physical attack and... Which one uh, this one get? <laughs> in your defense. I don't care about the in your defense. It's just to get extra physical attack. Because you got more physical attack on this blessing than you have on the, 
a mythical you uh, normal physical attack then we got this one physical attack critical damage and you can see critical damage a lot of them critical rate critical damage use less in your defense well it's actually not that use less when uh, you play them without uniform to be honest and then here we go again double physical attack physical attack critical rate and physical attack critical damage you can see the pattern here you want to put one physical attack critical damage per gear one physical attack critical rate per gear if you can and then you want to go uh fourth double physical attack and whatever you get after that to uh, get those stats as high as possible if you go with odin blessing to optimize this guy uh, if we look at the iso set overdrive or Power of Angry Oak are the two best ESO sets for him. Overdrive gives me a Fully Awakened, 8.5% all attack, all defense, critical rate, critical damage, and 8.1% in all defense with a, a proc of 40% increase of all attack for 20 seconds with a cooldown time of 54 seconds. Custom gear, we have obviously CTP of Rage. It's Avic, actually a very great CTP of Rage. Needs those stats to make up for the fact that uh, on combat hero he plays without uniform definitely and the max stat on the cdp of rage guys is what you see here uh, increase 0.9 percent per one percent dodge rate in critical rate and in your boss damage decrease by 60 percent you need those stats to be 0.9 percent and 60 percent on the cdp of rage or you need to reroll it because this CTP is going to suck. And as I was talking about my uniform you can see here I am missing the last uniform option uh, we are currently working on that uh, exchange subs to finish this guy you can see I got 15 days uh, of BOs left to do I need about 300 BOs to finish that so in 15 days exactly uh, we're gonna finish him so in four weeks from now and we're gonna be able to test is real power if there's no changes in the meta list for combat super villain uh, that's gonna be awesome I wish I had the mythical ticket for him but I do not and I don't buy uniform rank up tech and i think it is a waste of money in my opinion and you can see the uniform option here we have tech speed physical attack and tech speed here i make sure that in my indoor defense and cooldown is all fixed on my gear because without uniform you don't get access to the first and third uniform options so you need to have as much of those stats as possible to not get stuck with uh, not having enough indoor defense or not having enough uh, cool down uh, definitely and then we have dodge here and physical attack here so uh this is pretty much the stats we have on him now if we talk about the skills what skill is important what buff does he get well the buff you get uh, all speed increased by 20 percent so you don't really care about the speed so overdrive will actually be better than um than power of angry elk on him i guess uh fourth skills guards against it survivability iframe uh very great damage and a failure skill so there's no you know buff like critical rate critical damage or dodge rate so you really need to make up those stats on your stat sheets before you enter the fight but still very great here he gets 55 percent increase of all attack uh, i think that is pretty 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 damn great to be honest uh as a, a buff here but anyway uh, how do you play this guy this guy is very 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 simple to play you got a few things you want to keep four up but now to use four you want to try to pair four with fifth with the fifth skill and the fifth skill is really important to cancel it on the proper timing basically when you're going to press the fifth skill you're going to see the fifth skill start and it was spin it was uh, spinning around with his spear and actually you're going to see the fire coming out and you're actually going to hear the fire coming out and that is where you want to cancel that skill you're going to see in the gameplay guys in the video you're going to have a better much better idea how to cancel it because i show it in the video guys you're going to be able to see it over and over that fifth skill is going to see it's really important that timing because if you cancel the fifth skill too early you don't get the damage if you cancel it too late you lose damage so it's really important to have a perfect timing on that fifth skill so the optimal rotation when those skills chain up uh pretty much is going to be five cancel the proper timing into four four cancel right away into three three that is one of the skills you let go all the way you wait till it you know go in the air jump back on the can on the on the frost beast then after that you go with the first skills first skill depending uh on where you're proc and standing you're gonna either cancel it or not and then you're gonna go with the second skill second skill is probably the most important skill in the rotation because this is going to be the most damage you're going to get in 
the rotation. I know it's weird, a second skill, so you need to let the second skills go all the way. He's going to go with his spear, uh, throw that, well, smash the beast with his spears, and you need to let the damage go. Uh, and then the tier 3. How do you play the tier 3, guys? The tier 3 is very simple. You need to play the tier 3 when you have at least 2 seconds left on the proc. If you have less than 2 seconds left on the proc, you want to wait for the proc to be active again to actually use that tier 3 again. It doesn't matter how much time you have on the proc. It's really, don't use the tier 3 if your tier 3 is going to finish bef uh, after the proc hand because you're going to lose a lot of damage. And the tier 3, you cancel it as soon as you land. So your character is going to jump in the air. And then he's going to land with the spear on the ground, and that's the time to cancel. You don't let that tier 3 go longer than that, or you're going you're gonna to lose damage. And if you can actually time the tier 3 to smash on the ground, then 5, cancel 4, 3, 1, 2, you're going to get a lot of damage. But it's almost impossible uh, to, to time that properly together, but sometimes you get very lucky and you get that perfect rotation going and you can see it is a lot of damage but it is not enough damage to make it worth it to actually schedule it that way so you roll with what's coming with you with namer but you try to change those skills when they are available as much as possible so guys next we're going to be jumping in the gameplay sections and where you can see those cancel timing and all that stuff a lot better in the gameplay so you guys enjoy the gameplay section thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel drop a like on this video and make sure to follow us on twitch again link in the description down below so guys thank you for watching enjoy the gameplay section and i will see you next time